Hey, my reactors, how y'all doing? So I'm on chapter 29. I don't know how many takes I made on this book. I mean, this part. Phone calls and all that. So it's like, wait a minute, y'all. Mm. Mm. It's cool. The girl's about to be out, slave. When Marky walked into his crib and saw his full country cousins fucking the dog shit out of five bitches, he was heated. His large body covered the doorway, and he eyed them in disgust. Marky Baker has been jealous of them his entire life. When he was younger, family members could never talk, stop talking about how attractive Della Baker's sons were and how many girls able to land herself a baker should consider herself lucky because they hardly ever settled down. If he was the subject of conversation, the dialogue would be quite different. Instead of praising, they talk about how Marky needed to lose weight and get his body in order. Tired of living in the shadows, he left Mississippi and moved to D.C. for a better life. Six months after his arrival, he was able to save up enough money to make his move make his way into the drug industry. Hoping to prove his family wrong, no matter how much money he stacked, he could never measure up. So when his mother, Irma, called and asked him to make room for his cousins, temporarily he was furious. Not only would he have to hook them up with a key, which he left at the rental office, but he would also have to grant them access while he was out of town. I know y'all didn't disrespect and bring bitches in my my crib while I was in New York, Marky Harlow. He was showing off in front of everybody. Sorry about this, man. We were just having a little fun in the new city, Audio said. Marky closed the front door, and the four men put their hands on their weapons. A white towel hung over the edge of Marky's brown leather coat, and he wiped away his sweat. So I guess you know these niggas. Tornado. Marky Mangoon asks, yeah, they my motherfucking cousins. Hearing the commotion, Major walked out the room with his dick exposed while Killer stepped out the bathroom with Marky, towel wrapped around his lower body. Marky couldn't help but still and look at what God blessed his cousins with, and it pissed them off all over again. Sorry, man, Major smiled. We didn't think you were coming home tonight. We done, though. The girl's about to leave. You didn't think I was coming home. He tilted his head. Nigga, I live here. He stabbed his fingers into his chest. This is my motherfucking crib. It's cool. The girl's about to be out, Slave said. He had a shine in his coat to cover her body. Can you fellas turn around so they can get dressed? You don't want shit in here, Slade, Marky said, eager to get out on the king of the clan. I make the rules here. We ain't in Mississippi now. This D.C. You got that, he said with his hands raised. I just try, I'm just trying to get them out so you can have your spot back. Slade knew his cousin was weak, and he didn't want to embarrass him in front of his men. Right or wrong, he was out of order for bringing people in the house, and if he told his mother, she'd let him have it. We good. Fuck no, Marky said, shaking his head from left to right. We not good. Well, what you want us to do then, nigga? Audio yell from the kitchen. Neither one of uh, neither neither one of this neither one of his bitches had bothered to get dressed. Let you fuck one of them or something. Uh no, one of the girls yelled. He's too fat and nasty. Audio laughing this infuriate Marky even more. You niggas think it's a joke? I might be the funny man down south, but out here, motherfuckers respect me. I'm boss, Marky continued, getting it. Getting everything off his chest he wanted to since he was a kid. Y'all ain't got the family telling y'all that you better than me out here. Slave shook his head, knowing he was hurt about the past, but it wasn't his fault. On many occasions, he came to the rescue for him when the family ragged on him. So he tried to hold his tongue because if Slave flipped, it would be a wrap and someone had to, would have to pay. We know this your crib, nigga, Killer said. How many times you going to say that shit? Killer stop, Slade said, raising his hand. He looked at Shane and her crew. Ladies, go in the other room and put your clothes on. Let us talk to our cousin for a minute. 
I don't want them bitches in my room. I don't want them in my house, Marky continued. If they got to get dressed, make them do it out here. Then he looked at Major. Tell that bitch to get dressed out here, too. He pointed at the girl behind him in his bedroom doorway. Y'all been in there long enough. My sheets probably got all kinds of butt juice on them. And y'all washing my shit, too. Marky, we fam, Slade said, using his body to cover shining. So you ain't got to be doing all of this in front of your crew. Because you already know what it is if I go off. Because you already know what it is if I go off. And not one of them punks will be able to hold me back. Nigga, you don't know me, Corey, one of Marky's goons said. You don't know shit about me. Slade looked at him and said, you right, nigga. That's why I'm not talking to you. Just them bitches. Just tell them bitches to get out. Get the fuck out, Marky. Continue clapping his hands. It was so important that he get them to follow his orders for the first time in life that he wasn't thinking straight. Slade Jaws flexed because he couldn't reason with him why he was grandstanding. There he was, fat and sweaty in his leather coat. He was a hot mess. And there, and there, and there the bacon boys were fit, handsome, and surrounded by naked women. So it was easy to relate to his envy. Ladies, get dressed in the kitchen, Slade pointed. He was tired of talking to him. You think it's a joke, he looked at his man. Toss them bitches out. When Corey decided to put, be the first to step up to the bat, Slade hit him with, with a sleeper that neither his face nor his body could handle. Laying face up on the floor with his eyes closed, it was apparent that he wouldn't be, be waking up anytime soon. Seeing the chaos, the girls huddled up in a corner in the living room and scrambled to put their clothes on where they stood. The rest of the baker boys rushed the other two goons while Slade handled the third. Marky stepped out the way, finally realizing the trouble he started, all because his ego was out of control. The girls were screaming at the top of their lungs as the country boys put the beat down of lifetime on Marky crew. When shit got too bloody, Shannon and her friends quickly exited the, the apartment, afraid that someone would start shooting until they would be caught, and they would be caught up in the crossfire. Y'all breaking my shit, Marky yelled, watching his tape, watching his tables and chairs smash to the floor like wet paper. Not my entertainment center, please. Still having respect, still having respect for his cousin, Slade grabbed his opponent into the hallway by his coat, so he wouldn't fuck up his entire crib. Follow suit, major killer audio, and those others also move into the hallway. All you could hear was screaming and yelling at the as the Baker boys. Beat Marky men into a pole. That's the end of chapter 29. I will be back with chapter 30. Bye, my reactors.